Hey guys, welcome back to episode two of the podcast. So basically, if this is the first episode you're listening to, my podcast is called Let's Talk About You. I'm Ben Robinson, and kind of what goes on around here is we have a special guest. We talk about some topics that are super important to them, and then we switch it up at the end and ask some, answer some questions and play a game. So our special guest for this week is Miss Brooklyn. So let's talk about you. You can just give yourself a little introduction. Okay, hi, I'm Brooklyn. I'm 16 and I'm from Canada. Um, I don't really know what to say about myself. I create a lot of body positive content, but I'm also super passionate about makeup and fashion and I just kind of do a little bit of everything. And she's very, very well known among social media and very positive, Has a, have a lot of people looking up to you. So <laughs> lots of pressure, but there's a lot to talk about. First and foremost, the thing that really, really grew your account was the body positivity posts. Obviously, like you've been doing other things for so long, but that was like really what grew your account. So what like started that journey for you? Like obviously all bodies are beautiful and what kind of inspired you to come to that realization and start preaching that to other people? Um, well, when I was growing up, I didn't really start to have body issues until when I turned 14 and I had the first time that an old pair of jeans did not fit me anymore. And it was because they wouldn't zip up. And it was kind of hard because it's like, okay, I got bigger in the waist and the hips and it was hard to deal with, honestly, as a 14 year old girl. So then I started to go through kind of a self-love journey. And then by the time I had hit 15, I'm really happy that I could come to the consensus that I really do love my body and I wanted everyone else to feel good about their body. So as soon as I started to get a platform on TikTok, I remember it was right after I hit 100K, I was like, okay, I can't just like have this platform and not do anything with it. So instantly I wanted to work, talk about body positivity. So that's when I put out my first initial post and then I kind of didn't post as much about it. I would post about it from here to there. And then I really started to post about it and speak out about it. And it just kind of all fell into place. And my account grew millions in the course of a week. Yeah, that's that's another thing is like, obviously that was probably really, really amazing to experience but like that must have also been super stressful it honestly was quite stressful because it was me shifting from doing povs to more body positive and even dance content which people liked which was awesome but it was a lot of added pressure in the course of a few weeks going from about two million to six million that's yeah that's literally crazy i could never even imagine i like i i gained maybe like 30k over a week once and I was like oh my god that's so much <laughs> but, I know I did the um, same thing <laughs> yeah that's crazy I'm obviously I'm super proud of you you deserve all of it and basically the one thing that I did want to bring up is a lot of the videos that did really really well for you were you like kind of reacting to hate comments and not even really like saying something specifically but just like being yourself with a hate comment up on the screen to just show them that it doesn't really affect you like where did you get that idea from somewhere or did you kind of just like start doing it and it did well I honestly just like I didn't put a crazy amount of thought into it I wish that I had some sort of big explanation but it just kind of came to me and I just did it one time and it stuck and I continued to do it and react to them and then I had to the one, to the whole lot of Chapa's dance, which just went crazy. How many likes did that get? I think that one of them has about 9 million likes and oh 50 God. or 60 million views. That's crazy. It's That's literally crazy. insane. Was it like, like immediately after you posted it, it started blowing up? Yeah, I had a video. I remember it was the first time and the only time I had a video reach a million views in the first hour. And I went, <gasps> kind of cool. yeah. I always find it so crazy when you like upload a video and then I had, I remember I had one time where I uploaded a dance video and then it kind of flopped. And then I checked back like three hours later and it was gaining like hundreds of thousand views every five minutes. And I was like, yeah. excuse me? Yeah, the, the algorithm's super weird like that. But yeah, so basically like that was, those were the videos that like really blew you up, but did you want to also talk about like how you were making these POVs like for months and you would put so much work into them and like you didn't really see much growth until like all of a sudden. 
Is that yeah, like, is I, that true? Or like, like, how did your account like grow basically? Um, so for me, if I go through the whole journey, so I was creating just kind of fun content for literally nine months to a year. It was just random content. I was creating comedy videos. It was back when you actually had to write on a piece of paper and hold it up backwards. That was but times. I remember that. <laughs> um, and then I had this awesome idea because I had bright pink hair to start dyeing my clothes pink to match my hair. And that's when I, that grew me to about 20K and I was like, oh, I'm so excited. And then over that course about, I would say November of last year, I started doing POVs. And then from November to January, I got to about 30K. And then I was creating like five POVs a day from about March for all of March and I think some of February as well, I was creating them like crazy. And I was able to build my account up to about 100K at the start of April. And then all of those old videos started getting hundreds of thousands of views as my new content was blowing up. So I had videos just circulating the For You page and then I gained like a million followers in a month. Oh my God, that's so crazy. That was a really yeah. long explanation for no reason. <laughs> I'm so sorry. No, yeah, that's it's it's interesting, like just to kind of like figure out how TikTok works because it works so differently for everyone. I mean, like like there's some people like you have been creating content for so long and like all of a sudden it really started to pick up or like like Sienna literally just started making videos and immediately was just like blew up like crazy. And obviously both of you deserve it so much and both of you actually also have that in common, like that body positivity element to your account. I think like, it's honestly really interesting how like TikTok has changed in that sense. I mean, I don't know about you, but I never really saw a lot of people who talked about that as much like before you and Sienna and a lot of other creators too, that like I follow that really preach body positivity and, you know, being comfortable with yourself. But do you think that it was kind of like, a new do you think it's kind of like a new thing that um is like up on TikTok or like do you think people have been doing it but just didn't get as much recognition um I think that it was kind of always on TikTok but it was definitely in way smaller quantities but I feel like TikTok was just a lot less substance if that makes any sense like there's a lot less substance on TikTok last year like no one talked about politics world issues anything to do no one was really focused on using their platform until this huge wave of 2020 hit so are you like are you grateful that you started to speak out about this or like, like just to preface, once I started making more like political videos, that was when I really started to get more hate and more like duets and things of people like, not like shooting me down, but just being like, oh, like, you know, you shouldn't say this, you shouldn't say that, like, blah, blah, blah. I'm right, you're wrong. So basically, are you like proud of yourself slash like, do you wish that this went any differently? Or do you are you like kind of happy with where everything is right now? I'm beyond happy with how all my body positive content has gone and how well received it's gone. Whereas me speaking out about politics, people just did not enjoy the 16 year old from Canada speaking out about world issues. Yeah, that was that was the other thing that I wanted to bring up is basically like for whoever's listening, for you right now, Brooklyn, you have the time to just explain, not really like explain yourself because you're not doing anything wrong, but kind of just like explain to people why it still matters and why it's still important to a 16 year old from Canada. Well, so basically I was speaking out about world issues, Donald Trump and why he needs to get out of office, which we all kind of know, I don't need to go back into that, but why it's important for people in Canada to care because the United States knows that they're the center of everything, so they need to know how they affect other countries because a really good, simple issue is trading. Like, that's how it affects. But not only that, with climate change and so many things going to affect Canada, which we're literally your neighbors. And that's, it. I mean, first of all, the age thing. Like, I just have been so frustrated with social media with people being like, well, you can't vote, so it doesn't matter like no matter if you can vote or not, you should definitely be having opinions on politics because just to kind of be blind to it just because you're not 18, it's just such an ignorant stance. And like, there's just so much to learn, so much to open your mind to. Honestly, a lot of it's really interesting. Like learning about politics is really interesting and being a part of like the activism part of it is really inspiring also. Kind of just like moving back more towards the body positivity side, I had a few questions that I have like personally that um, I mean, none of my content is really like 
focused towards that. Most of my quote unquote activist content is more focused towards like American politics. So first and foremost, how does social media like affect your body image? Like not even necessarily for you, but like just in general, like how does it affect that? Um, I think the biggest issue with social media is that it's skewed images. There's a lot of Photoshopping. There's a lot of people only showing the best side of them, which isn't a huge issue. It's that young girls and boys and everyone do not understand the concept of it's just them showing the best side of them. It's Photoshopped. It's not real. It's not realistic which is where it comes into issues because then it downplays like a huge part on self-esteem of young kids. Like even with me wearing makeup, I like to always show the before and the after so that they understand the difference, you know? Yeah, and honestly, like it's not even, it, you know, wearing makeup, face tuning your pictures, blah, blah, blah. It's not a bad thing. And honestly, like people should do it if it makes them feel more comfortable with how they're perceived. It's just the main thing as a young person on social media is to understand that like nothing you see online is the full truth. Even if the picture isn't completely, even if the picture isn't touched at all, right? You don't know how that person's feeling. You don't look at someone's account and be like, oh, they look like they're so happy and they look like their life is perfect. You never know what is behind social media. And that message really like primarily ties into body image, not even body, but just self image, like how you perceive yourself, nothing on social media is realistic enough for you to compare yourself to that. Exactly. You said it the best. <laughs> and also, um, like, in terms of like being on social media as someone with so many eyes on you and comment section under every single one of your posts where people can just leave their, their thoughts, their criticism, but they're also their support. Like, do you think that social media has helped you become more confident? Or like, did that kind of come from you? Um, I honestly feel like it's come from me. And a lot of those comments have made me feel a lot more co um, confident, but almost go more of a backbone to other people's comments. Like, I feel like someone on the street could walk up to me now and be like, you're ugly. I hate you. And I'd be like, okay. <laughs> and all, like, kind of going off of that, like, how, like, how have you seen what you've done how have you seen it help others like in terms of comments dms you get um i've gotten actually a lot of dms a lot of comments and a lot of emails saying that they genuinely felt more confident about their bodies after watching my videos which is all i ever wanted to do if i could help like genuinely one person it sounds so corny but it's the truth if i could help one person to feel confident in themselves just because confidence is such a huge thing it helps you in so many aspects of life and I've just seen so many comments, so many DMs from people. And it's the sweetest thing ever. So there's a lot of like myths, I guess, for lack of like a better word. There's a lot of myths online about weight, about like eating, about your body. Are there myths online that you've seen that you kind of want to like debunk or like address? I think probably the biggest thing that I want to address is diet culture. Yes, you can go on a diet, but I think the biggest thing is, is just eating healthy, balanced meals. You learn about it as soon as elementary school about eating your fruits, eating your vegetables, eating your wheat, eating your meats and proteins. Like it's just all about eating balanced and staying balanced. You don't need to go on some crazy diet and restrict yourself. It's just so toxic. Like you need to have a healthy relationship with food. Anything, I just want to say right now, like, if I could debunk any myth, is that diet culture is good for you. It's not. It, you need to have a healthy relationship with food. Mm -hmm. That's that's very, very true. And just like, overall, like, debunk the whole idea that diet culture is even necessary for you to be healthy and for you to love yourself, because it's really not. Mm -hmm. So in terms of like, the, in terms of posting and in front of hate comments, does it take you a long time to find them or do you get a lot of hate? Actually, they honestly usually just pop up in my comments. Like I literally just see one pop up and then what I'll do is I'll just record a random video and save it in my drafts because I'm like, okay, if I want to use this comment later to react to it, to say something about it or to not say anything about it, I just have it right there instead of having to search and spend unnecessary time. Mm -hmm. Another thing is like you have a whole image of positivity and you're a role model like what's your favorite part of that being your 
niche and your least favorite part? Um, my favorite part about that being my niche, niche, however you pronounce it. Um, the favorite part about that being my niche is probably that I receive so much love from people and such like a positive and just so many DMs and comments saying that it's actually helping them rather than just like, hey, I like this video, like you're actually helping me, which I love. And then the hardest part would probably be that people tend to hold you if you're a positive influence or someone that speaks out about that sort of thing. They hold you to like a godly standard, like you can't do no wrong. And if you do something wrong, then everything else you did does not matter anymore. Mm -hmm. And people forget that like, as much as I try to be perfect, I'm still 16. I'm still a kid. Most importantly, I'm still human. Yeah, yeah, for sure. That's something that I like, I wish if there was one thing that I could say to every single person that follows me is like, obviously, I care very deeply about using my platform for positivity, but I'm not perfect. Like, I'm still educating myself on so many things. Even like, last episode I did with Ashton, I learned so much about gender and about like, the usage of pronouns and stuff that like, I would just previously like, I would just try to be as accepting as possible. But like, I didn't know a lot about it. And so I'm not perfect. And I learned so much last time, last episode. And I'm learning so much with you about like body image and like that on social media. But like neither of us and no one at all is perfect. And like the second someone makes a mistake, it doesn't define them. Um, okay. How do you like, is there a way that you ha like have to keep motivated in terms of like posting content or are you just like passionate about it? And it's just like fun for you. Like you just, when you're bored, you're like, I'm going to film a video. Honestly, it is a fight for me to get to film content these days. I go through week sports where basically for a few weeks, I will be so motivated. I'll be filming so much content, everything going so well. And then I just hit a downward spiral where I don't want to get out of bed. I don't want to do anything. I don't get ready until about three o'clock in the afternoon. Like it just, it goes in sport to, for me of creativity and motivation to having absolutely none. Mm -hmm. I'm sure. Yeah. I'm sure that's really hard, but then again, like it's all part of the process. You know what I mean? Okay. So now I'm just going to move on to questions because basically for people who don't know, I, every time I am recording a podcast right before we press record, I just take a little picture. I put on my Instagram story and I ask people for questions. So you know, if you're listening and next time you might want to have a question answered, stay up to date, stay up to speed. Um, I answer a bunch of people's questions. Well, we answer a bunch of people's questions. So without further ado, there's a ton of questions. So first and foremost, how has TikTok changed your life? Is it for the better or for the worst? It's definitely changed my life for the better. I've gotten to travel and meet so many amazing people. And honestly, like the coolest thing about it is probably the business aspect as well as genuinely like the friends that I've made like I've met then I've met so many like I did honestly met over a hundred new threat friends through TikTok that I would call like friends that I could call up whenever and they're just such sweet genuine people yeah it's so cool to me and the best part about it is like it's fr it's friends from all different like backgrounds and like places in the world because honestly like the extent of the people you meet in real life really kind of goes with like where you live. And that could be like, that could impact the people that you meet with like the demographics in like which you live. But like the people that I met through TikTok are literally like the most diverse group of people ever. And it's so cool. Like it's, I'm so grateful. Okay. Well, someone just said, did she actually go to that party during a pandemic? No. <laughs> no I haven't been to any parties I was hanging out in small groups and truthfully like we had all been tested recently mostly for work purposes mm -hmm. or the like we were all tested with the exception of a few people which stay home all the time yeah honestly this kind of ties into what we talked about before how like when you're more of a like when you're more preaching positivity everyone takes you down for one small thing I think honestly like because I've been super strict about like the pandemic too. And I, you know, for the most part, I didn't really see anything wrong with how, like with what you did, how you like behaved, how you addressed the situation too. You addressed it so maturely and people really kind of like tried to tear you down for one small thing when you're such a positive person, you're such an amazing like role model. So first of all, no, 
you didn't go to a party you were being super safe about it and so that's yeah. that <laughs> this is also i mean we definitely already address this mostly but we can go more into detail on it someone said opinions on people who can't vote getting engaged in politics oh well i think we can both answer this really quickly and say like it's important to be engaged and it feels so liberating i think that's the word mm -hmm. to be educated about politics yeah that's definitely true and for both of us actually like because we're both people who can't even vote in the first place, who are like super involved in politics. Like, I don't know, like it just feels kind of ignorant of people to say like, but you're 17, why do you care? Because it's so obvious, like it's so obvious why I care, you know what I mean? Exactly. <laughs> oh my God, this question is so funny. This question's funny, but honestly, like we can, I can answer this like seriously. Tips on not being fucking miserable. <laughs> honestly? <laughs> tips on being happier basically um I, i'll give a few tips and i'm sure you can too because it's definitely something that we both have you know tried to figure out ourselves basically a few of my tips that i have for being happier is to break from your phone and look outside like i what i do is i go in my hot tub and i leave my phone inside and i just like i look at the sky i listen outside i don't know for me personally, I've always liked nature. So it's kind of like a de-stressor for me and it makes me happier. But I guess basically like if that's not something that interests you, I don't know, like just find something that you're super passionate about about that doesn't involve your phone. Because I think that, that while the phones are great, sometimes that's kind of like what drags everyone down. It's just like getting stuck in your bed on your phone, like not being able to get up. That's my advice. What's yours? Um, for me personally, I, I need to actually have days where I'm down and I just let myself breathe and relax so that I'm not feeling miserable and upset. And I just need to take some downtime, take some rest time mm -hmm. and just do it. And then also take care of myself in that day. Like I can't just lay in bed with old makeup on, like not doing anything like go take a bath, do a face mask as cheesy as it sounds, mm -hmm. go even like cook up a good meal. Yeah. Honestly, like self-care I think that a lot of people have kind of turned it into something like you said like more cheesy but it literally helps so much like it makes me feel so much more de-stressed when I have I'm like okay like I don't have anything left to do tonight let me put my phone away super early and like like take a bath or like light a candle go in bed like watch a tv show like put on a face mask super basic self-care things can actually like be really, really helpful. Okay, someone said, do you feel confident in yourselves? This definitely kind of goes into the theme of body positivity. This is something that I haven't really opened up about. Um, so before I let you speak, I'm gonna speak first, even though you're the guest, sorry. <laughs> Basically, I, I've been working on it. I do feel really confident in myself, but the one thing is I do have this, I have this back condition where Basically, like for lack of a better word, I have a hunchback. That's just like kind of, it's called kyphosis. I don't know if anyone has it. I mean, it's not super rare, but um, that's the one thing that like, I've really had to kind of honestly take Brooklyn's advice in body positivity and love myself for that because it's kind of hard when like, I am a swimmer and I live by the beach. So I'm literally always like, like without my shirt off in front of a bunch of people, blah, blah, blah. And it just everyone can see it. And it's super obvious. Uh, like, I know, I notice it more than other people, but it is like pretty obvious. So I don't know. I'm very confident in myself, but I do need to work on that one thing because I don't know, it's it's holding me back a little bit. For me, um, I felt like mostly confident. There's still things that I don't feel as confident in. Like, I don't feel as confident in my nose per se is something that, but I'm starting to love it even more and more because I have like a bigger nose, I have bigger nostrils, but I'm starting to get more confident and just love it because I have a bit of a unique face, I like to think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, honestly, like that's definitely one thing that I've been seeing a lot of people, like a lot of trends on TikTok recently are like bragging about your looks, which, you know, that's a whole nother topic, but that's super toxic. And I saw a video once that was like, not everyone has the same features of their body, no matter how much like work you put into your body, no matter how much you work out or you eat healthy, blah, blah, blah. Like 
no one's body is going to look the same if you all do the same routine. You know what I mean? Like everyone's body has different features. So like, I don't know. The most important part about confidence is to be confident in all of your, like everything that makes you unique, like all of your features. You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. And like probably one of the biggest things, this is kind of off topic, but something that I wanted to talk about Mm -hmm. is people that always, I always see people being like, okay, like promote body positivity, but don't promote being unhealthy. And the thing is, is that people look at one of my friends who's plus size and be like, she's so Mm -hmm. unhealthy. But I've spent days and days with her on end. So I know her personally well, not just from her words, but she is, she would do take three dance classes a day, go to rugby practice after school, and then go take multiple classes at night. And then she eats healthy and people just don't get it that everyone's body is different. Yeah, honestly, like, and that's, that's something that I meant to bring up too, is just the fact that people are like, okay, like everyone's body's beautiful, I guess, but like, that's unhealthy to be overweight. First of all, that's literally, that's, that's another myth, honestly, that we can talk about. Well, why don't I let you talk about it? Yeah, that's, that's probably the biggest myth that I've heard is that like, being overweight is extremely unhealthy. Like you can't promote being overweight because as long as you're taking care of your body and nourishing it the right way, like my message, because sometimes this gets confused. My message isn't just to go and binge eat junk food every night because that is, binge eating is an eating disorder. Mm -hmm. But my message is to not be afraid to cheat on foods. Like you don't have to be like restraining yourself from eating yummy foods just eat a balanced diet take care of your body stay active be healthy but also love yourself no matter how what you look like Mm -hmm. and honestly like having a good relationship with food again so important because we're all on this planet for a short amount of time and food is really good so like don't restrict how much food you eat just because like you think that other people are going to judge you for it or you're going to judge yourself for it. We're only on this planet for a short amount of time and food is really good. Enjoy it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And it can also just not like make you not feel good if you're not eating the right food. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like people don't just say to eat a balanced diet to be mean. Like you need to eat a balanced diet. And that's something I need to work better on being completely honest. Mm, me too. Is eating like a totally balanced diet. Mm. Okay, last question, because I think this one is a pretty interesting, good question. If you could say something that everyone in the entire world would hear, what would you say? Um, um, I'm trying to honest, think. Like, yeah, to be completely honest, I don't really know. Honestly, like, yeah. as, as cheesy as a few of the sayings may be, like, if everyone in the world heard me speak at once, what would I say? I would tell them, nobody's perfect and love one another regardless and that seems like super basic but basically if I could guarantee that everyone would take my advice everyone listening in the entire world I would say that because that's the most important thing yeah if if I could say something and everyone would take it I would say something along the lines of like like you need to help out others like as we've been knowing like billionaires there's no reason for having that sort of money like millionaires that's awesome but billionaires there's no reason for you to have that amount of money. Give back. Mm-hmm. Like you could be giving back to so many. Just be like a kind human being. Yeah. And just like every like do everything in your power to be kind because obviously like if you're struggling financially like money isn't I, like I don't know, giving money isn't the only way you can help others, you know what I mean? You can help others by literally just like being there for them if they need someone to talk to. So that those were the questions. I think they were pretty interesting. Um, Again, if your question didn't get answered, I do this every single time. So if you get lucky and you catch my post before, I mean, obviously, because I post it like right before we start recording. So, you know, a lot of people that ask questions might not ask them in time. If you get lucky and I posted the questions thing recently, definitely try and drop a good question because I'll probably read it and answer it. So for the game, um, we always, well, we try to tie it into you a little bit, but like, it's just supposed to be like a fun little thing at the end to spice up the episode. So one thing that I noted from your like POVs and stuff is that you really like princesses and like Disney princesses and stuff. So I have um, a game of would you rather, and it's like related to that. 
I love princesses. <laughs> I want to rewatch all the Disney princess movies. I need to do that soon. This isn't part of the game, but just what's your favorite one? Um, my favorite one at the moment, because it changes, would either have to be Tangled or Princess and the Frog. I love those. Yeah, I, I honestly, I don't even think I've seen all of the Disney, like the Disney princess movies. Like, I don't know. I feel like they're classics. I feel like I need to watch them. <laughs> or I like, I like, I really like the Broadway version of Frozen. Because oh, they really? capture Anna's character way better in the Broadway version. Interesting. And just makes me fall in love with her and her character a lot more. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Well, I'll have to check that out. Okay, so I have five questions. Um, I'm excited. They're kind of funny. Okay, first off, would you rather live in Agrabah or Arendelle? Probably Arendelle. Mm -hmm. Although, I don't know. I think I don't really like the cold, so I don't know. <laughs> yeah, but like it's sunny and then it's cold there. True. Uh, yeah, I was just thinking like because New Jersey gets so cold sometimes that like I'm all of the colleges I'm applying to are like hundreds of miles away because I want to get away from the cold. <laughs> um, okay, second one. Would you rather have a genie or a fairy godmother? This is kind of obvious, but I feel like I'd rather have a fairy godmother. I feel like she'd be cool. Yeah, I feel because the genie you just get three wishes and then that's it, right? Yeah, and I feel like genies are kind of scary. Like, you can screw yourself over if you're not extremely, extremely careful and specific. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. Um, <laughs> this one's funny. Would you rather turn into a frog or turn into the beast? Turn into the beast because people would be scared of me and I would be at risk of, like, dying all the time. <laughs> <laughs> like someone accidentally stepping on you as a frog? <laughs> yeah, or, like, there was literally, like, I was watching Princess and the Frog, like, a few days ago, and they were literally trying to, like, capture and eat the frog. Oh my god. So like that's just scary. Yeah. Um, okay, fourth one. Would you rather be a fairy and be able to fly or be a mermaid and be able to breathe underwater? Like, oh my goodness, that's a hard question. I know. Me five years ago would say mermaid, but me now I feel like I would say fairy. I feel like probably the opposite for me because if I was a mermaid, then I'd be way better at swimming. <laughs> so Maybe I'd be the, I'd be a mermaid now, but I, I, I don't know. Both of them would be pretty cool, actually. Yeah, I don't know. Mm. Being, being a mermaid would be cool because there's so much that, like, isn't discovered. True. But also that means, like, you could die. Like, there's scary things in the oceans. Yeah, there's, like, so much ocean life hasn't even been discovered yet. It's, like, kind of creepy to wonder what's down there. Anyway, um, okay, last one. Would you rather have a talking snowman? Like as a pet or a little chameleon like Rapunzel? Uh, I would, I feel like I would have a chameleon. Snowman could like melt. I forget, like, did the chameleon talk though? Or did it, was it just like a little? The chameleon, Rapunzel could just like hear the chameleon. Like Rapunzel could just like listen to what animals were saying. And I thought that that was cool. I don't know. Honestly, like maybe, maybe I'd have a chameleon too. Although Olaf was actually really cute. So I don't know. I really like Olaf. Okay, so that was the game, and that was our little episode. Thank you so much for joining me. This was so fun. Brooklyn is one of my favorite people, one of my closest friends from social media, so thank you for being my friend. Thank you for being you, and thank you for joining me. Thank you for inviting me. I had so much fun. I love you. <laughs> I love you, too. Okay, so I just have a little list of people I have to thank, because, again, I'm not doing this alone. Thank God, because... This is kind of crazy. And I, again, I had wanted to do a podcast, but I didn't really know how, and I was alone, and now I'm not. So um, thank you to Sarah, the video and audio editor, Audrey and Daniel, Sydney and Lou. They're all the directors. Um, we've been having meetings. They're super helpful. They're great. I love them. Um, Xander, the production manager, and finally, Aiden and Ari, who are the producers, I love them both. And everyone else that it took to get this podcast off the ground. And you, Brooklyn, thank you for joining me. Bye!